Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, today, I'm here with my good partner on this award stream. So I will let him introduce himself first. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Shui Jiang. I'm a senior staff power engineer from Google. I'm Patty, strategy sourcing director for Microsoft Azure. So today we are here um, to show you the collaboration and also the partnership uh, Google and Microsoft have on this 40F on both power delivery and hope you will enjoy today's presentation. So in the agenda, uh, we will show you um, the 40F ecosystem in um, evolution uh, Google and Microsoft Drive in the both side, and also share with you about the fixed rate and regulated 40FO on both the deli power delivery solution we want to share with the industry. And also, um, we see some quality challenge and how we plan to resolve it. And also show you like uh, how the different strategy and way we want to take to make sure that's a supply free and enable the technology. Uh, because yeah, in the past couple years, we experienced very serious semiconductor shortage. So when we drive a new technology, we definitely want to make sure hey, that's in the consideration. And also, uh, we will show with you the some qualification requirement we plan to do and the call the next action. Thanks. Uh, okay, so uh, here's a slide showing the 48 volt um, power onboard power ecosystem evolution um, in the industry. And so uh, from 2012 to 2016, uh, like Google was pretty much the only one like, doing 48 volt power. And at that time, uh, we were leveraging the, uh, like um, two stage solution from the telecom industry. And the first stage is isolated, um, like efficiency 96 percent ish lower power density, high cost. Uh, so in the meantime, we do have, uh, at that time we did have um, like 40 able to point of load direct conversion single stage as well. And then moving to 2016, so Google announced the join uh, of the OCP. Uh, and in the meantime, there was more um, 40 able to point of load single stage uh, direct con conversion solutions. But uh, we see the ecosystem is not is still limited and not as ready as the 12 volt ecosystem. Then we kind of uh, revisit the two-stage architecture and uh, develop a STC topology um, on for the first stage, um, set the benchmark of 98 plus efficiency, um, non-isolated and unregulated. And then after that, uh, we see there's a lot more momentum uh, on the first stage for the a volt conversion. Um, there's a discrete solutions from many vendors and that's uh, in between 2018 and 2020. And then passing 2020, so we see the industry is moving toward more like a modular, higher power density. And there's uh, two segments. One is the fixed ratio, and the other is the uh, regulated. So it's a, it has uh, different form factors, higher power density with the uh, fixed ratio converters, and then the qu standard quarter brick common footprint for the uh, 12 volt regulated designs. Then the second stage, uh, the multi-phase VR, uh, we have the TLVR going on uh, on the development and then deploy it for the faster transient performance for uh, CPU and, and ASIC uh, applications. Then beyond 2022, um, there's a trend toward higher density, higher bandwidth VRs, and, but we don't have too much information to share at this moment. So uh, here uh, is a summary of the Google for the onboard power evolution. As you can see, like uh, starting from 2017 after Google joined OCP, um, we started to implement the two stage uh, uh, using discrete designs. So there's a fixed ratio converter for high bursty uh, load like CPU or memories. And then we have a regulated 12 volt designs, uh, discrete design as well for the uh, miscellaneous uh, rails and uh, PCIe load that require 12 volt. And so then we're migrating to um, modular designs uh, starting from 2020 uh, for the both the fixed ratio converter and the regulated designs with higher power density. And the key theme uh, for the 48 volt design of the first stage is also shifted from like efficiency or TCO centric uh, toward uh, higher quality, higher reliability, common footprint, 
um, and um, vendor e larger vendor system uh, ecosystem and um, and more optionality uh, for the um, modular designs so um, in the Microsoft we just really start the 48 for um, journey so um, as my partner mentioned today we go with a discrete first right and uh, very fast we realized that with all the architecture and the power requirement of a server we need uh, to enable um, our the, the efficiency and TCO total cost ownership we want to drive and we realized we need to do something different so um, go higher density and also we need to enable more player from the industry to support the common footprint and also the um, the, the, uh, the design fr flexibility and also um, make sure that solution fee with uh, many um, architectural platform we want to drive. So uh, as I mentioned, we go with uh, uh, discrete topology as a first stage. Uh, there's a lot of IC supply have a different footprint, different solution, and it's really hard to achieve the multi source to secure the supply chain. And uh, we want to drive the efficiency higher than 80, um, 98% uh, with a 15 load in the regulated version. And also, so we are exploring like how to uh, this modular um, first stage um, bus mo uh, module converter. So that's a uh, um, evolution Microsoft is driving. So um, as a share, so we find the modular actually will go um, the higher depending on the solution can go double. Uh, discrete, the power density will be per um, square millimeter will be lower. Um, but discrete we find slightly have a, a, li a little bit higher efficiency and maybe because right now the modular design is not very optimized and not we, we don't get a lot of player involved to drive the improvement. So that's why we are today. And we also see the system design as some um, benefit. We can make a PCBA smaller, the server hosting both smaller, so we can try to squeeze more silicon SOC into one server. So there's three Top of priority uh, we would like to uh, see in this world stream is number one, um, make sure we have we build with a common solution uh, which benefit whole industry. We have a more supplier uh, secure supply chain and to support the flexible design. And second, uh, the quality come first. We want to make sure uh, we have a good quality of the design, as I mentioned, like maybe improve more efficiency and also increase uh, the, the standardization across the industry so everybody can participate and, and utilize the benefit of this architecture. So in the past two years, I think um, industry suffered from the semiconductor shortage. So when we see the new technology coming, so we definitely want to think how to make our engineer don't, don't need to worry about sourcing, not go, don't say, hey, I need to multi-source, right? So we want to enable the technology with a worry-free and drive by driving the common spec, common footprint to reduce, uh, also help our IC partner to reduce the uh, complexity in their production to improve improve their production efficiency and also output. And also by partnering with Google together uh, in this uh, world stream, we want to increase the uh, business demand to make sure like uh, all the suppliers who want to participate have a very healthy business demand uh, with the uh, two companies here, or even in the more company in the future. Okay, yeah, so just like uh, Pat introduced, so we are partnering with uh, Microsoft and we look at um, from technical side, the 48 volt first stage key specifications. So here we not listing all of those, but just highlighting a few. Um, so for like the regulated designs, we are um, pretty much using the quarter break, uh, those are footprint standard form factor. And then the fixed ratio, there's a uh, slightly higher power density uh, with uh, about a quarter inch by uh, a three quarter inch by one inch, uh, kind of like X, Y, Z, X, Y area. So input voltage nominal 54 and range 40 to 60 and output is regulated or fixed ratio. Um, 
Um, for TDP, so for the quarter break, we're looking at up to like 1600 watt and uh, fixed ratio is coming to like 1000 watt at uh, the minimum input voltage, 40 volt. And so in terms of the operation parallel uh, current sharing capability, we do prefer having both solutions uh, supporting and current sharing uh, operation. And for regulated designs, we'd like to have the active current sharing. For um, unregulated designs, we'd like to see the impedance match. Um, Efficiency-wise, we do set the benchmark of 98 um, above and 97% for the full load. So for the others, I won't go through all the details, but eventually uh, we'd like to uh, call for more participation from the power supply vendors to join our work group. So, um, so here, um, today's presentation is one of the key motivations, um, not only just share our specs, but also our views in the past uh, decades of our experience in 40 volt power and on the quality side and what we're really looking for for uh, qualification and tests. So you can see, uh, th here's uh, some statistic data. Uh, on the left side, there's a pie chart and it shows the our power issues distribution across the different phase of NPI program. For example, like at pre-EVT or EVT phase, this majority of the power issues occurred. And then at a later phase uh, after DVT or post PVT, the percentage of the uh, power issues get less and less. But keep in mind the impact of those issues at the later phase is huge. And they can cause uh, like line down or service down even with like 1% or even less power uh, failure rate. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, so in the, in the middle, so you can see the pie chart, uh, we see that uh, we, we um, have the category where the power issue is coming from. There's a second stage, there's a first stage, and we can see the first stage do take a large share of the power issues. And we think it's partially because the uh, first stage is uh, emerging technologies and still there's uh, many things that are not material uh, in terms of the test coverages. And then from the co uh, root cause perspectives, we do see a um, large percentage of the root cause is attributed from the vendor design or vendor manufacturing or vendor component quality. So we do uh, uh, call for like more improvement, how we can do better job on the vendor side to uh, enhance the test coverages. Yeah, so here gives you a sense about uh, um, the complex 48 volt environment we see uh, in the data center. So um, by looking at the spec, um, it's a 54 volt nominal, 40 to 60 range. But in reality, there's a very complex uh, voltage profile on the bus. There's a battery units, uh, backup units, there's the rectifiers. Uh, so the voltage profile can go up and down with uh, all the different DVDT through rates. And, and on the load side, um, the ASIC um, machine learning, AI, ASICs, or CPU servers, they can go up and down with all the random profile um, at different frequencies, different duty cycle, and different magnitudes. So all these complexities creates the uh, chance of having power failures at uh, when you have a faster DVDT or have a load fast transient at a certain frequency or certain pattern or at a certain operating point, at, for example, at a Vmax, or even like with a like a longer run, uh, the components may be worn out due to uh, sustainable uh, stress across the power devices that may be associated with the switching noises, temperature, or parasitic inductance of the PCB layout. So then in terms of qualification, right, so like to capture all these issues, um, of course, um, we do need to uh, have a bench qualification when, you ha when the vendors started to design a product and there's a um, static characteristics and dynamic characteristic validation of system functions, component stress, all these tests, they're good. Um, and then uh, it's also important to ha have this module like chamber qualification with a certain quantities of samples tested with a temperature cycle, with input voltage cycle, transient load cycle, power cycle, to capture some like earlier def uh, defects um, and then make corrections to the design. Then it's coming to the manufacturing test, which we think is very critical to the first stage design. And, and that's what we want to enhance further with the extended um, burn-in test for the system interfaces, um, including the load sweep, input sweep, uh, and with the automatic system tests. And then lastly is the reliability test. 
So um, here's um, call to action, and the next step we want to share with you. So uh, we would like to invite industry members um, to join this uh, 484 OCP work stream. So we will define the by extended work group and also the co-work group. So if you want to sign up the co-work group, right? So we will expect you assign the resources and time, the hours, to review and finalize the development of a qualification, including like criteria or specification and worksheet, and also maybe for some design improvement, how do we increase uh, the uh, quality and efficiency of the 44 modules. Um, so the, if you're interested to join us, this journey, and um, please email here. <laughs> yeah, you see an email. And then we target to have a first meeting Q4 uh, 2023 this year uh, to discuss a timeline of a workshop uh, activity and initiative. Thank you. Questions? Uh, yeah, um, before go questions, um, I also want to call out some names, uh, the Lorenzo from Microsoft and Hao Yang from, um, Lorenzo and Hao Yang from Microsoft to support this uh, uh, activity and as a contributor. And the uh, Google side, we have uh, Michelle, Chi, and also uh, Mobshire and Sing and Greg, also the contributor to this uh, uh, work stream and presentation. So thank you everyone, and questions? I guess I can start with the first question. I think it's a great step in standardizing because you know we talked about going down to 48 volts. Uh, is there a step to go from you know 12 to further down, which this work stream will address, or is it only from 48 to 12 volts? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question. So uh, we think uh, for the first stage, right? So since we can do the modular ways, uh, so it's very, it's much easier um, to standardize the form factor, the common footprint. Right and the qualification criteria. Like the second stage is more variabilities. More okay. Yeah, so I don't think the journey will just stop with a 48 to 12 volt. So we definitely will have a second phase or following stage we will discuss like what will be the making sense for next step to target. Maybe it's a 40, a 12 to point of flow or, or others, yeah. yeah. I think that it's a great point because at the end, everybody wants the total system efficiency to be perfect all the way down from ACN to one vote or whatever you want to get to. Thank you. Anybody else? Can you just address uh, this question for Google, the uh, efficiency difference between the two-stage approach and the single-stage approach that you had previously used? Uh, so I think uh, we, we did have uh, efficiency data like seven, eight years ago uh, when we first uh, used the single-stage designs I think at that time it's uh, comparable. It's definitely better than the legacy two stage using the uh, telecom, like isolated first stage quarter bricks. But then afterwards, uh, after like 2016, so we started using the non-isolated uh, unregulated designs. So the efficiency benchmark for the first stage was set to about 98%. So it becomes uh, about equal to the single stage. Any more questions? A uh, quick follow-up on the first question. Um, will you be also be addressing anything other than 12 volts? Like, So you talked about 48 to 12, but there's a whole bunch of other intermediate bus voltages that are being discussed. Yeah, so, uh, so, right, so this adds the, like, the first stage conversion ratio, right? So like today, uh, the majority of the designs is based on 4 to 1 uh, for the unregulated, and then 12 volt is uh, still an industry standard. And definitely we, we see the rooms of uh, getting like the different conversion ratios for the unregulated design. And that's something we can further discuss in the work group. I think it's really exciting, thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you, you very much.